What's going on guys? Night Rainbow here with another reaction video. And I'm going into part four of the Keepers of Discord series. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get it going because I'm looking forward to this. So start it in three, two, one, start. Do you really think he's awake in there? Summer Sky asked softly. She rarely spoke up as she was always being overridden by her much louder older siblings. As much as she looked like her mother, she really had inherited none of Sonny's disposition. Not even Celestia knows for sure, Sonny replied, scrubbing away. But I always believed that he was. That's why this job is so important. But he's all evil and stuff, Cloud Runner protested. Evil? Evil? My boy, I've seen evil. And let me tell you, a little bit of chaos ain't got nothing on true evil. It doesn't matter, Sonny said firmly. If he's trapped and aware, then he deserves to be treated with as much kindness as we can muster. I heard the brush drop into the bucket with a loud thunk, and then Sonny continued. Besides, a little chaos can be a lot of fun. I could practically hear the grin on her muzzle as she descended the steps on the ladder. And then I heard the bucket fall, and Sonny's foals around me all gasped in shock. There was a loud cracking noise and a shriek of pain like I'd never heard before. And then there was immediate chaos. For once, I found myself not enjoying it. Mama! Mama, are you all right? Winter Magic screamed. The other two were crying, and Summer Sky was just repeating, Oh no, oh no, oh no, over and over again. Sunny, behind me, sucked in a deep breath, then said, Mama's fine, sweetie, but I broke my leg on this stupid ladder. Cloud Runner? Yes, Mama? The young buck said, detaching himself from his weeping younger sister. Can you be a brave boy for me? I need someone to fly back to the castle and get help. Tell them I fell and broke a leg, okay? Okay. I'd never seen that colt fly so fast in his life. You should do it because I said so, Winter Magic said, with a tone of voice that just grated down my spine like talons dragged across sheet metal. I'm the oldest, so I'm in charge. I don't see why. You're only a year older than me, Cloud Runner shouted back. Um, we shouldn't fight, Summer Sky said, far too softly for her quarreling siblings to hear. Gosh, she seems a little like flesh shy. Fight. Mama put me in charge when she got hurt, Winter Magic said, stomping a hoof for emphasis. Well, Dad put me in charge when he left, Cloud Runner shouted back. He said I was the stallion of the house now, and I had to take care of things. Wait, what? Jumble left? What was all this about? Sonny hadn't told me anything about that. That's stupid. You're just a colt. And you're just a filly. Don't think you're better than me because you got your cutie mark already. The argument between the older brother and sister continued to degrade, until finally... Winter Magic levitated a bucket of water over her brother's head and dumped it. One scream of pure rage later, and she was doing her best to keep away from her brother, who was running and occasionally flying after her for all he was worth. Poor little Summer Sky just sat at the base of my pedestal and cried. I almost had to thank these three for the new experience they'd given me. For the first time in my life, I was finding chaos to be annoying. <laughs> it was two weeks later when Sonny finally returned. Two weeks of squabbling from the older two. Two weeks of fights and arguments almost non-stop. While Summer Sky did her best all on her own to at least keep me clean. Reading or talking to me was out of the question though. As the other two just kept on fighting. I have to tell you. I was pretty happy to see that light green mare come wheeling in, her back left leg in a cast and bandages around her ribs. Hi, funny face, 
she said with a smile as Cloud Runner pushed her wheelchair up to me. I missed you. Sorry about that. I shouldn't have been so clumsy. No kidding. I can't imagine it's exactly common for a Pegasus to hurt themselves falling off of a ladder. That's, that's true. Turns out I had a broken rib or two as well. I'm under doctor's orders to not do any work, but I can at least make sure these three do their jobs right. She turned her wheelchair around and stared at the three guilty-faced foals before her. So, this place is a mess. Here's what we're going to do. In a surprisingly short amount of time, the weeds were pulled, the dead plants removed from the chaos garden and new ones planted, and my statue was scrubbed down. Then, as a reward, the youngsters got to eat from a picnic basket while their mother read to me a story that she'd written. See, there are only a certain number of stories that can be considered chaotic and funny in the world, and Sunny had read most of these to me in her first couple of years. She'd then taken it upon herself to write more of them, and occasionally came back with something completely new. Her stories were terrible at first, much like her paintings. But hey, they grow on you. <laughs> Eventually, Winter Magic and Cloud Runner stopped coming along. Something about ponies after they got their cutie marks makes them think that they're too cool to do the things they did when they were foals. Oh, yeah. I get updates on them, though. Winter Magic, living up to her name, had been accepted into Celestia's school for gifted unicorns and was boarding there now. She got pretty good marks, according to her mother, though the filly's assumption that she was always right tended to get her into trouble with her teachers from time to time. Cloud Runner went the exact opposite direction, which isn't surprising for Pegasi, or so I was told, concentrating more on the physical side of things. He was heavily into playing cloud ball, and was even getting some attention from professional teams, who assured him that, if he kept up his training and kept improving his skills, he might have a chance at getting into a pro team after graduating. She tried to be coy about it, but I knew Sunny well enough to know that she was almost bursting with joy and pride at her children's accomplishments. I finally learned about Jumble during a heartfelt conversation between Sunny and Summer. Apparently, that idiot had found another mare. Oh, As if any God. stupid pony could possibly be better than Sunny. I was stuck between thinking good riddance and being outraged on Sunny's behalf but she seemed remarkably calm about it. Your daddy still loves you, sweetie, she told Summer Sky when the filly had asked about it. Sometimes things just don't work out between grown-ups, but it's important to remember that he still loves you. But he doesn't love you, Mama? Summer asked, tears in her eyes. It's... I think that he still cares about me, she replied carefully. But his heart has moved on. Do you still love him? Oh, sweetie. Even though I'm mad at him, I still care about your daddy very much. But lucky for me, there's so much love in my heart from the three of you that it doesn't really hurt at all, now that he's gone. I could tell she was lying, but just a little bit. Summer Sky, compared to her siblings, was just quiet. Sweet, as her mother put it. Sunny doted on her, and Summer bloomed like a rose, eventually becoming more confident. She was quite the able assistant as well, and helped her mother with the stories they read to me. Much to my surprise, Summer Sky had a wonderfully inventive mind, and the stories she helped write, and later on wrote herself, were charmingly off-kilter and amusing. Well... This sure has been an exciting day for me. I was roused out of a semi-trance in the middle of the night by a sense of something snapping, and the feeling of the cage that bound me becoming just a little less solid. I'm not sure which one it was, but apparently one of the bearers of the elements has passed away. Oh, what? Hooray for discord. One down, five to go. And then all I'll need is a quick burst of chaos, and away I'll go. 
and I won't be stupid enough to play games this time. No hiding the elements in a book. No riddles. No jokes. First thing I'm doing is dumping those blasted things in a volcano somewhere. My mother is dead, Sonny said with a sad smile. Heart attack. She died peacefully in her sleep. Wow. Evening Breeze was dead? Really? I mean, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Two more of the bearers had passed away already, and my prison was that much lighter now. But still, wasn't she just a filly a little while ago? It's funny, I guess, Sonny said while scrubbing my ear. I always thought there'd be enough time to put things right between us. She never approved, you know. Not of me doing this job. Not of me marrying Jumble. Though I have to say she might have been right about him. That last bit was said quietly, while she looked out of the corner of her eye at her filly. Summer Sky was tending to the Chaos Garden. Things were better at least towards the end, she continued, switching to my other ear. She'd gotten over a lot of her anger towards you, Wait, what? Why would she be mad at me? Sonny had the answer, luckily, so I wouldn't be eaten alive by curiosity. When she was little, she felt that you were taking my grandma away from her. She felt Gran spent too much time here when she could have been spending with her. Also, she said you have a scary face. She smiled, then kissed me lightly on my now clean cheek. She sure was wrong about that, wasn't she, Mr. Funny Face? Huh. Uh, I was, you know, I was really curious about the main six, what was going on with them. I knew they had to be getting older at this point. I just want to know which one of them passed away, though. I don't even know when this fanfic is written. Because if it, if it was bef it has to be before season 3 most likely. So Twilight can't be a princess. At least in this uh, story. I don't know though. This is, getting, this is getting really interesting though. I'm looking forward to the to get through the rest of it. So I'll get to those in uh, several days. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take it easy. I feel the pain so deep. It takes away my sleep. Took me by surprise.